are listening to season four of Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast. I'm Kimberly Evans, and I'm so happy you are here. After planning events and working in the marketing industry with so many incredible clients and entrepreneurs for almost 20 years, along with personally experiencing hardship in life and business, I've discovered how powerful our mindset and purpose is in creating a life of joy and celebration while having a whole lot of fun along the way. Join me with a coffee or cocktail as I connect with inspiring leaders, entrepreneurs, tastemakers, and extraordinary people as they share their journey in life and business and how they are striving to live a life of purpose. Your fears and beliefs in yourself will be transformed as you work towards creating the best version of yourself from the inside out. You're in good company. Cheers to celebrating simple life. Today on Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast, I'm chatting with Jorge Morano. I can't even believe I have Jorge the bartender on my podcast. Known for his role as the bartender in Bachelor in Paradise, he worked at Playa Escondida in Sayulita, Mexico, and has since started his own tour company. His passion for the history of Mexico is evident in the incredible tours he provides for guests from around the world. He's very knowledgeable and has connections to get you into places you would never be allowed, like the private beach where they filmed one of the fantasy dates on Bachelor in Paradise. Tune in to our enlightening conversation where Jorge shares his hilarious story of meeting Chris Harrison for the first time and how this TV show led him to his next amazing adventures. His energy and excitement will absolutely make your day, so tune in. Hello, Jorge. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I am so excited to have you here. You have no idea. You know how you you wish and you hope for certain things to happen in your life. I have, I have manifested good things. And one of them was in 2021, I'm going to have Jorge on my podcast. That's what I said. That's what I said to my friends. And here you are. It's coming true. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you very much for the invitation. Once again, (laughs) and here I am. Here you are. So we, as a, we have a, my husband and I, and a few friends first, obviously like the rest of the world got to know you through bachelor in paradise. When all of a sudden there is a new bartender in town named Jorge. (laughs) And suddenly you are on television screens all over the world. I can't even begin to imagine how things must have changed in your life from that moment. And I would love to hear how you first initially got started there and where you are now. Okay, this is exactly how it happened. I work on this hotel that is a little outside of Sayulita. And and it happened that I was in charge of the bars When the show came over to film the first time, they did not want any employees of the hotel on site. They said, we got our own crew. So we all went sent away. But as they were uh, getting ready, they realized that, you know, we already got 70 plus people that know the place really well that we're already paying for. If I am there, I am... I'm going to agree that uh, my face will be exposed on TV, whatever, all these many things. Well, it happened that after everybody started arriving, they started talking to me in day two. And every time I had to tell them, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you. Just The first one was Jared. <laughs> uh, it was, I mean... I, I must be honest, I never in my life, I knew, I, ne- I never seen that before. So I had no idea that I was around a bunch of people that were famous, <laughs> like normal people. So there, at this moment, they keep talking to me, keep talking to me, and I'm like, sorry, I can't talk to you. I think production is when they realize that, uh, that I could be um, a good, you know, uh, addition to the show, they came over and mic me up, sign another bunch of waivers, and I say, "What would you like? What, what would you guys like me to do?" And they say, "Just be yourself." I'm like, "Oh, that's easy." <laughs> it was fun. 
it was fun because on the bar, even though there was a little bit of drama, most people came over just to decompress because it's really stressful to be on a reality TV yes. show when you have cameras everywhere. So they keep telling these guys, uh, these cast members, please stop going to the bar. That's <laughs> not part of the show. <laughs> so guess what they did? <laughs> they were at the bar more. So uh, that was me, my introduction. We had a great, uh, great time. We had a lot of fun. And when they left, they say, yeah, you know, that was a one-time, one-time shot. Once again, never seen the show. Then a few months later, uh, her name is Paget Brewster from She Was in Friends, and she does Criminal Minds. This lady came over to have a, um, her wedding anniversary at the hotel. And it's when she told me, I mean, we were told, do not approach, do not approach that lady. This is this person. And we were like, okay. Two days later, after she arrived, guess who approached who? <laughs> She came to me all nervous. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I want a picture with you. I'm like, <laughs> whatever. I'm like, you know, we know who you are. And I, I know you're messing with me. So that was the best thing that happened because oh. she, fil she filled me in with everything. She's like, no, this is going on. America loves you. And, and from that moment, um, my self-esteem you know, he went, he had a little, um, a little bump, my ego too, but I was able to control that one. And it was, it was a life changing experience because they came back another year. And how did it change me? Well, after being exposed on TV, I used to do tours for a living. Well, besides bartending, my, my time off, I would be going off in the jungle and stuff. And after I got a little popular is when I started my business, uh, doing tours. And, uh, and, and being a bartender, uh, you work six days a week, six, 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. That totally, totally changed my life. I used to work to live. I'm oh, sorry. I used to live to work. And I now, now I work to live and Aww. that's a big, big, mm -hmm. big thing that I am loving right now, enjoying family and time for, by my, for myself. Yes. Wow. That is like a once in a lifetime, unbelievable experience. So when you were on the first season, like you're saying, you had no idea, even after the first season was filmed, that this was such a popular show. You had no idea. No clue. That's the best. That is Actually, amazing. <laughs> so just to give you a good reference, <laughs> um, the day that I got signed up, like you're going to be in the show, <laughs> so you know. Um, and this I never share with any anybody, you know, um, podcast or anything. Uh, when they told me, okay, you're going to be on it, that was the first rose ceremony. And um, we had a second bar and they said, hey, in these couches, please don't allow anybody to sit in these couches, you know, production. There were so many people working in the set that quite often cameramen will be tired and sit down for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I was in charge and they told me, don't let anybody sit on these spots. <laughs> I didn't know who the guy was. And this guy, well-dressed, sit down with a bottle of water and his phone. And as he's drinking water, he's spinning his phone. And as he's checking the phone, he's spinning his bottle. And I say, well, I cannot come in and tell the guy, hey, get up. This is not your spot. I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach with that excuse about that. Why the spinning? So as I'm talking to him, trying to kick him out, but the guy was really, really nice. And he's like, yeah, I know who you are because I introduced myself. That was Chris Harris. <laughs> that was no him. And I'm about to, yes, I had no clue. <laughs> this made my day. That is the best. <laughs> that 
I'm about to kick him out, but he was so nice, I just couldn't do it. I, I went to one of these producers, the one in, cha in charge of the audio. He was, he, him and I, we become good friends because he filled me in with a lot of things. He was Mexican, and anytime I would come over and say, who's this, who's that, what's going on, give me the, the, the fill me in with this cast, the, yeah. I, Ashley, and there's a bunch of them, I will never finish. And I say, who's this guy? He's, that's Chris Harrison. I'm like, and who's that? Oh. The host. I'm like, okay. I, I used to deny having a smartphone back then. So I got a hold of a little, uh, somebody's phone and I Google it and I'm like, Chris Harrison. <laughs> oh, that's the host. And at that moment is when I start digging about what's going on. <laughs> Everybody, sorry if I don't shut up. That's no, I love it. This is the best story you could share. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, when I, um, oh, I lost the train of thought. Um, there is the moment, yes. Um, everybody, you know, Chris is a huge star. He's a great guy. But every time, everybody bows to him. Cast members, they see it and they're like, Yes, sir. Yes, master. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, everybody, you know, they know his career. They respect him. And, and I'm like, I don't know who this guy is. Hey, what's up, man? Do you want a drink? And I'm just treating him like everybody else. Like any anybody. anybody. Yeah. He loved that. <laughs> he loved it. But the very next day, he's like, hey, Jorge, you going to be in the bar? Yeah. Okay, I'm bringing a camera. Make me a drink. And... Um, and a bunch of little things like, hey, uh, I want to do a, a, a um, <laughs> you know, you've seen it through the years. I want to do a boomerang with you. I want a photo. I want yeah. to you know, arm wrestling and I want to do this and let's do your credits. I want you to be in the credits or whatever. Uh, somebody in production, my good friend say, hey, what's up? What, what's going on with you? And <laughs> that guy, he's always like, where is Jorge? Whatever. And, uh, I'm like, well, I just treat him like anybody else. I'll tell you this, as I dig more and more in Google and I find out how big of a guy is, <laughs> then is when I start getting a little nervous. Mm -hmm. But by this moment, I'm already, you know, him and I will already vent a few things. And, <laughs> and that, was, that was great. That's on Chris Harrison uh, story. <laughs> that is epic i love that that is the way that you met him because <laughs> i bet you he just felt so refreshed that somebody could just treat him like a regular guy rather than how he probably gets treated by people when he's everybody knows who he is that's amazing yes and if anybody ever sees the guy don't be afraid to ask for a photo don't be afraid to ask for an autograph he like, I mean, he's, he's a great guy. Well, he, he is on my list to someday meet and have on the show. So I'm going to tell you that today manifest that someday I'm going to have Chris Harrison on my podcast there. You heard it. <laughs> okay. Hey? You let me know. I'll send it. I'll send him a message. Send me the link. I'll send it to him. Give me a date and let's make it happen. Deal. You're amazing. <laughs> Um, so I would yeah. love, so we're talking about Bachelor in Paradise. So I do want to get into talking about your, your tours and Mexico. And I have so many questions, but I would love to know from the seasons when you were bartending there, what are some of the best, craziest, wildest things that you saw and did while you were there? Like you had the bird's eye view of the whole thing, right? The things that your ears yes. have heard. <laughs> right yeah, yeah 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 yes 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 um i just 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 allow me a couple seconds because i gotta be careful uh there yes some I, things I, I hear not it. a lot to discuss okay but yes uh if i one moment i back up it's because i remember i signed for <laughs> nah, not discuss that <laughs> I don't want you to get but into I'm, trouble. So you only share what you no, can share. <laughs> I already, I already got fired. So I don't think <laughs> I'll get in trouble. <laughs> positive no, attitude. A lot of people, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people tell me, oh, you're not there anymore. I never left. 
I still there, you know, with the yeah. Jorge's Torres. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 I just gotta be selective because there is some things really crazy, but I gotta think what did not make it to TV that I can't talk about it. Ah, uh, la 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 la, craziest moment. Yes. Yes. Okay. And everybody said that. Um, <laughs> there is first season first season yes Chris Bukowski shows up at, at Paradise I think on the third week four week don't remember but by this moment a lot of the cast members already been drinking for days and they are <laughs> done they already coupled up it's the same season, I think. Well, I, I, I remember Tenley Molson, which is my favorite overall. Yes, she's okay, so Carly, lovely. Carly, too. Aww. So Jennifer Saviano, Carly Waddle. I mean, I can give you a bunch of names. Most of my favorites were from season one. Because they treat, well, I'll, I'll go there later. Um, okay, Chris Bukowski arrives. And, and a lot of the cast members were drinking water and uh, you know making it look like it's an alcoholic beverage because right. their liver were borderline <laughs> so he arrives and talks to the guys hey i'm here he's he wanted to have a good time and drink <laughs> but guess what everybody were like no and he wanted to drink so i told him you know if you need somebody to drink with i'll be your drinking partner i'm game he started with vodka, and I say, no, no, no. I got a bunch of scars because of vodka when I was young. <laughs> and, and I say, no, you know one thing? Why don't we play my game? Let's go on tequila. He's like, game. We had so much to drink that day. He never hand the card, the date card. He oh. had it. He was gonna, he was gonna hand it. But he was having, we were having such a good time that he forgot about it, I guess. He was nervous. <laughs> that is the moment because a lot of the people were already coupled up and the people that were available wasn't his thing. So this moment, I mean, pretty much production came over and get him off my bar and say, hey, dude, you need to head the car <laughs> and try to hook up with one and another one and get uh, pretty much declined. Almost uh, he fell on the, we, we, they did a hole on the, on the sand on the beach. <laughs> He almost got roasted like, like on fire. So it was one of the craziest stories that I can talk about right now. <laughs> That's fabulous. Oh, I love yes. it. So how yes. then, as you kept moving on, you're doing the seasons of bartending and were you still doing some of your tours on the side while you were working mm -hmm. on the show? So that was always going on in the background? Yes, uh, before the show arrived, I, well, actually, a year after the first season that I participate is when I officially started my business. But previous to the show, two years previous to the show, I was doing tours already as hobby. I was bartending and any day off, I would be like, hey, I want to show you around. Hey, I know this secret spot. I know this waterfall. I need, you know whatever people but it was people that i met at the bar at the right. hotel okay yeah people that you know like if if you had the vibe like the one you have right now and we're talking and not necessarily you were drinking or whatever but if you were right there and i felt that vibe i'll be like hey kimberly and um whoever you're with i'm sorry you say um has been i don't know pardon me yes um mm -hmm. Yes, uh, let's say you were right there with your husband and be like, hey, Jorge, you know, like start talking. And I'll be like, hey, I like you, your vibe. Uh, what are you guys doing on Thursday if it's my day off? And I knew that you were in there. Oh, nothing, you know, we going to Sayulita for a hike or whatever. I'll be like, let me show you uh, and meet you at one point at one time and take people out and just for a hobby. But that's how I started first. <laughs> fun. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to take you up on that because someday once we are able to travel again, we are going to be somewhere coming for a tour and that'll add that to my bucket list for maybe 2022. 
<laughs> hey, hey, you know one thing? Why are you pushing that far? I'm, I'm game. I, well, maybe, maybe sooner than later. Yes. <laughs> well, well if, you, if you put it out there, you know it's going to happen. That's right. I like it. I like it. I'll take you up on it. I'll get back to the show in just a moment, but I wanted to let you in on something really special. Just like you, I value my health and am so grateful for the team at Holistic Physiotherapy and Wellness right here in Saskatoon. Not only do they have an incredible clinic, but also offer telehealth virtual appointment options for anyone across Saskatchewan. I have had virtual physio and naturopathic appointments in these last few months, and they have been game changers for me, all from the comfort of my own home. And right now they are offering 10% on off any Pilates package and subscription in person and online with unlimited use from right now in January until the end of March. And as a listener of Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast, you can also receive $10 off any of their core health services in person or virtual telehealth. They have naturopathic medicine, chiropractic, physiotherapy, pelvic floor physiotherapy, massage therapy, yoga therapy. Book online today at holisticphysiowellness.ca and and use the code CELEBRATE10, or you can call the clinic at 306-373-0060 because this is your year to take care of you and feel your best. What kind of tours and what kind of places? I absolutely, I think that I should have maybe been born in Mexico. I feel so at home when I am there, the people and the places and the beauty. I have just had some of my most amazing life moments in Mexico and my children love it there. And we just cannot wait to go back. It is always, always on the top of mind of we, we time the rest of our life around when will we be back in Mexico? Oh, only this many days till we're back in Mexico. <laughs> um, but what would you say for yourself with this, with the tours and the unique places that you show people that are off the off the beaten path not necessarily the regular things that people find in the little brochures at the hotel (laughs) right what kind of places where are your favorite places what are these hidden gems that just light you up and make you so excited to show other people those places that you're not gonna see anybody out there hot springs that they never been touched by men wow waterfalls that you know if you know we got jeeps and we go in four by fours we fix certain roads we get certain permission from the locals so we're allowed to go to certain places that a lot of people can't you know, I make deals with the locals and say, hey, I'm going to clean up. I'm going to make sure there is no trash and la, la, la. That's why I'm allowed to go to certain places that people cannot get in. Hey, I'll describe a few. And unfortunately, you know, through the years, social media, people find these spots. They post about it. They do uh, share the roads. And uh, I can't go to certain places no more because there is people in there. Or you start finding graffiti or trash, and that's not mm. good. But I'm not. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm more like, where is the places that I go? Um, I love this place. It's a uh, uh, an ancient civilization that you find uh, carvings, mm. carvings in the middle of the jungle. It's like going into an Indiana Jones, where where, where Indiana Jones went, took a, something out of it. And in that place, everything else went behind, went, went down behind him. He had to escape. So he's ruins. Uh, I personally brought geologists, archaeologists, shamans, one shaman, I'm sorry, and a local guy. Uh, have you ever heard of ley lines? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, just to okay, there is a place in the United States called Sedona, Arizona. Yes, and you know how a lot of people talk about, like, oh, this place, the healing powers. The you know, mm-hmm. when two ley lines are crossing, that's what is called a vortex, the vortex of energy. 
A lot of the big civilizations were created where a vortex is. When the shaman, the governor, the king took advantage of that power and everybody will be like, we feel something in here. Is how the lot of the big civilization started. So this place is called Alta Vista, the petroglyphs of uh, petroglyphs of Alta Vista. And I do know where the spot is where you can go, and if you can feel, if you're sensitive to energy, you may get dizzy, you may get uh, you know shortbread, and and it is a magic spot that I go. That's one of my favorite places to go. Wow. And uh, uh, at this, you know, this big event, December 21st, I went there. So cool. I have this app. I, I, I must tell you this. I'm going to cut that conversation because I don't want to do, I could do this for three and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> I have an app. I have an app that there is a carving of a bow and an arrow. I'm going to send you uh, the, the picture on Instagram uh, privately so you'll see exactly when I was um, with this app, I, I did a screenshot. So I put my phone where the arrow was pointing at. There is Sagittarius, yes? Yeah. In, in the sun and just exactly where uh, all these planets were. He was... It was a moment that I was like, wow. Uh, it is a cool civilization. There is, you find carvings that you'll find in uh, Karnak, France, in Ireland, uh, some carvings that you'll find in Canada. And I got lots of theories, speculations, and so on. Then other places that I visit is waterfalls. Some of them that you can jump from seven meter high, three meter high. There is other places that they're really, really high. Private beaches. There is one of my favorite beaches that is being compared by, by good uh, critics as um, top five. Uh, oh. One, the, the beach that beat this beach that I go to, it is a seashell on Indigo Ocean. Okay. Place you can go is snorkel, and you're you're gonna find new coral and a lot of good things. You'll be swimming, and there is octopus and stuff. Wow. So, I uh, I'm gonna sound bad, but I don't take locals. If you're a local, I cannot take you. Oh. You need to be a tourist. Yes. Because if you're a local and I share these places, eventually yes. <laughs> you're gonna go there with somebody else. So, it is. Uh, I gotta be selfish. Well, that's not the right word, but I got to be careful in what Pro I share protective. to who I share. Protective. Protective. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I need to be protective of my investment of seven years finding and taking care of these beautiful gems. Yes. And it's not, it's not like I go, I, it's not like I go to work because I'm meeting new people. I'm having a good time and, and it is cool. I go to tide pools. I mean, I got a bunch of things, you know, and, and, and one of the things and I get excited. Can you tell about this? I love it. <laughs> One of the things, the way we do the tours is exactly like this. Sorry if I'm going too far ahead. No. On your questions. Mm -hmm. I'll pick you up in your hotel, house, or whatever. Then I'm going to take you to a spot to eat breakfast. Now, I, I, I never make plans. Quite often the guests say, I want to go here. I want to go there. I always say, hey. When we're in break, at breakfast, I'll give you distances. We're going to drive this long. We're going to hike this long. This is what we're going to see. This is from this point. I got this three miles, five miles, and, and, and trying to avoid to be in the car for so long. And we make the tours on the spot. The tour lasts eight hours, but if you want to keep going, my longest tour is being 15 hours. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, no extra, no extra charge, or I can make it shorter, but I never made it short. <laughs> only once, never mind, only once. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't do short, uh, short uh, tours because the, the way I am, I'm like, you don't want to miss this place right here, two miles that way. I got this beautiful spot that we can just sit down and enjoy ourselves. Oh, here, and and usually people. 
they drop uh, their places after eight, nine hours. That sounds so amazing because do you want to know what? I'm looking out my window right now and all I see is puffy white snow, freezing cold, looking back at me. <laughs> right? All I want is a waterfall yes. <laughs> and a tide pool and some snorkeling, please. <sighs> yes, yes. The temperature is good. Uh, no, don't hate me, Kimberly, but all, all I can see right here on the dash of my jeep. It's 31. No! <laughs> That's torture. I'll see what it's it is. 31. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look right now. We're going to compare this. Okay, you know what? It's actually, it's actually, I use the quotes, warm here today because yesterday it was minus 22. Whoa. But today is plus four. Yay! It's, Yay, it's, it's above true. zero. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I love the detail and the fact that you just go with the flow on these tours and that you just know, you know how to create an experience. And for me, I have been in event planning and marketing and creating experiences for clients and family and friends mm -hmm. for fun, my whole entire adult life. And I love how you are able to take the attention to detail on every single trip, tour, place, and just make it so magical. And I can only imagine that the people who have had the pleasure of being on any one of your tours it's etched in their mind as something that they will never forget for the rest of their life and probably come back for more. That's the idea. <laughs> yeah, totally. Because <laughs> you get a lot of Canadians down in Mexico, I'm sure. We love oh. Mexico. Yes, <laughs> yes. Lots of Canadians here because I don't know why they escape them from. Your yeah. country is so beautiful. <laughs> It is. It is beautiful and it is cold. So there's the escape. That's the problem. It is beautiful. And we like, I like living here from May until October. If I could not live here from November until April, that would be perfect. Well, perfect. you know, one thing, <clears throat> you know, the right person, I guarantee you won't spend more than $400 on the, on the long-term six-month rental. I can, I can help. Okay, well, we have a lot of things to discuss offline, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yes. what would you say, um, what would you say is one of your favorite parts about meeting people from different countries and people that are coming to your country and you're getting to share, mm -hmm. you're getting to share the story of your culture and what you know about your country with others? Oh, there you are. Pardon me. I, <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't know why I lost the connection. That's okay. I'll repeat the Can question. We go back the last yeah, 10 no seconds. problem. No problem. Um, what would you say is the your most favorite part about meeting people from other countries and having them come to your country, your home, a place where you have grown up and know all the things about where you live and you get to share all of that with somebody like me, Canadians, those of us who are not from there, but who are just so excited to be immersed in the beauty and all of the history of Mexico. What is your favorite part of being able to be a part of sharing that with your customers and your new friends that you meet on tours? Uh -huh. My favorite part is when they ask those questions that nobody does, which most people do, cultural. Mm. They're able to be, <clears throat> you know, you all, um, when I use the term, like American, Canadian, Europeans, you all come to my country and they see a beautiful, good weather, beautiful beach, be beautiful spots. But the culture Mm -hmm. The things that you don't, a lot of a, a lot of the people that come over and don't see or don't know, 
that's the most interesting part. Like as soon as I start start talking about like, oh, this is the way, this is the way it's here. <clears throat> it will be, by the time I see their faces and be like, wow. I mean, we see different things. The, the, the details that I could share about a somebody lifestyle or going to somebody's house and show you and say, but you got to be the right person, of course, mm-hmm. you know, not everybody. There is people that they're like, oh, I'm not interested in this. I just want to see this, this, this. But when there is guests that they want to immer- submerge, emerge, submerge Immerse. into the culture yeah. and the way that people emerge. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you. The way they wanted, you know, like get to see, know, uh, is when I enjoy it the most. Okay, so seeing those faces is my favorite part. When I'm leaving people to see how happy they were to learn these many things, to see these many things. And it's not like it sounds like, oh, I'm done with the tour. No, no, no. It's that, that moment is the part of the day that I enjoy the most to do an overall, like, they're looking back and be like, hey, we love this part. We did like this. And, and you know, when, when they say, oh, I, I didn't know this about your country. I didn't know about the culture. That's a great thing. That is so I, amazing. I, like I love that. Well, I am definitely going to be sharing the links in the podcast show notes of your tours and to connect with you because I know, especially now after this past year, 2020, we're all wanting to get out of here even more than we ever did before. (laughs) (laughs) Uh Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, but it was a good year, I think. Yeah, it was a good year. I do too. There was a lot of good things that came from some hard times, but we're here, we made it, and 2021 is going to be amazing. So before I could talk to you for hours, you have so many interesting stories. So I'm going to have to have you on as a guest again. But before we wrap this up today, I have a few questions that I always ask every guest so that we can learn fun little details about your life. Okay, you ready? I'm nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> You're no. nervous. <laughs> this is this is gonna be easy and fun. I promise. Um, okay. Hey. Are you? Do you like reading books? And what are you currently reading? I do read seldom, and I'm reading the Emerald Tablets right now. Okay. I I usually have like five. I'm not, I only read a little bit every day before I go to bed. I don't have a lot of time, but I like to read before bed, but I usually have five books on the go at once where I'll read a little bit of this one and then a little bit of this one and a little bit of this one, but all different types of books. Like one, one, maybe more funny, one that's more serious, one that's about business, one that's about, (laughs) and then I don't get them confused because they're all very different. Wow, wow. Well, that's ne- weird. <laughs> next, no, 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 that's good. No, that's good. That's variety. Next to my bed, the three books that I have one is the Emerald Tablets, the other one is the 72 Names of God, mm. Men's Health Magazine, and the other one, it is a, um, it is a Mexican book. It's uh, by Cuauhtemo, Car- uh, Cuauhtemo uh, Sanchez, which is uh, Juventud and Ecstasy. So wow. uh, those, those will be the books that they're next to me. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have Chris Harrison's book sitting on your night table right now? <laughs> uh, no, no, I do not. I do not. But I'm going to, I mean, uh, it's so hard to get books here in Mexico from the United States. But I remember sending him a message about getting it. Chris, how have you not sent Jorge a copy of your book yet? I actually, I was gifted his book from friends of ours. So I actually have a copy of his book and I read it and I own it now. Yeah. You let me, you let me know if Chris, if Chris doesn't get you the book, I'll personally ship you a copy of Chris's book. You have to have one. You have to have one. No. How about this? (laughs) No, don't ship it. When you come back. Yes. Fair trade. I'll give you a tour for the book. (laughs) Deal. Deal. Okay, next question. Do you drink coffee and what is your coffee order? I do drink coffee and I just brew it and straight that way. Black, straight black. Straight black, no sugar, no cream, no nothing. 
That's how I drink my coffee too. Perfect. Yeah. Maybe a little, maybe a little bit of cold water so okay. I can drink it right away. Yep. That sounds awesome. Um, if you could pick one song that would be the theme song of your life, what song would that be? Eh, la, 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 I gotta think of the name right now because I got a little nervous, but it's uh, <laughs> uh, you got a friend, if you oh. get to know you got a friend. Uh, but I, 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 uh, I have it with a lady singing. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're making me nervous now. <laughs> la, la, la. You send you send me the name of it once you think of it, and then I'll play it on my Instagram stories once I once I share the episode. Yeah, I have it, James. <laughs> da, da, da. Yes, James okay. Taylor. James Taylor, yes, James yeah? Taylor. You got a okay. friend, yes. That's yeah. that's my song. I love it. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> thank you, thank you. He's just uh, he's been he's been really really good song for me. For years. <laughs> I love that. Okay. What is your favorite junk food treat that you like to eat? Uh, Kit Kat. Oh, good. I always find that chocolate is one of the things that always is very different, like in country to country. When you eat chocolate somewhere, the same chocolate isn't the same somewhere else. Like a Kit Kat in Mexico is different than a Kit Kat in Canada, you know? It's always yes, interesting. Yes. I like trying different ones because then it's interesting to see how it tastes somewhere else. Yeah, so Kit Kat and Twix actually too. Those two will be the, the ones that I will once in a while have one. Love it. Um, when was the last time that you had a really good laugh about something? Laughed so hard. And what were you laughing about? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was last night in uh, <laughs> And did it involve oh. any tequila? <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't drink. <laughs> you don't drink? <laughs> no, I don't drink anymore. I don't drink anymore. But it was, uh, I went to visit a good friend of mine uh, last night to his place. He was about to go to bed and I say, I just got to catch up with you for the day. So went to his place. Um, and uh, and he just showed me a little bit of uh, there is a show on Netflix that he showed me a little bit, a couple minutes. Is I think it's called Big Mouth, and we just laugh. <laughs> yeah, it's not really, you know, I'm not proud of it, but he showed me that, that and I was like, holy moly! It put a certain scenario that uh, we were with somebody having fun, and we laugh hard. That's funny. <laughs> Okay, oh, last I question. You're so funny. My last question is, if you could go and travel anywhere in the world, where would you choose to go? Italy. Mm, I've never been there yet. Me neither. That sounds amazing. Italy. I watch, well, first thing is, Mexican food, you know, is amazing, it's awesome, and uh, and it's very regional. But through the years, my favorite food is Italian. Also, I love I love anything with the the culture, the romance, the history, the mm -hmm. everything. And uh, one of my favorite movies, Julia Robert Roberts, uh, Eat, Pray, Love. Yes, I love that movie. You want to see me crying? <laughs> Put me that one. That's the best. I might need to rewatch yes. that. It's been a long time. Uh, I only watch it 12, 13 times besides uh, Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh, I love it. Jorge, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing so openly. And I just love your energy and how much joy you bring to the world. And I am so grateful that you said yes to being on the show today. Thank you. Hey. Come on, thank you, thank you, thank you. I got three more hours if you want, so hit me uh, whenever if your guests uh, enjoy this. Uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Right? 
Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast is a proud member of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, sponsored by Sask Energy. Protect your family and your home from carbon monoxide poisoning. We make sure our house has a carbon monoxide detector on every floor of our home. We have even taken it a step further and kept a note in our calendar so that we remind ourselves to test the batteries and make sure that it is working properly. Check your vents and chimney regularly for debris. If you think your home has carbon monoxide, leave your home immediately or call 911 or your local fire department. Go online to saskenergy.com for more information to keep your home and family safe. This show would not be possible without you my incredible listeners. It would mean the world to me if you would subscribe to Celebrating Simple Life on Apple Podcasts or download and listen on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you choose to listen. If you really want to make my day, leave a review. These reviews, ratings, and sharing screenshots of podcast episodes that were engaging for you on your Instagram stories and tagging friends that you think should hear the episode too really helps the podcast grow. It makes me so happy that I often select reviews to read on the show. And if yours is chosen, you will receive a special gift from me. Thank you for being a part of my mission to connect stories of business and life. Cheers to celebrating simple life.